Hello there champs and welcome to the show. Today we're going to see how the XPS 13 games. The Cabby Lake model of course. And if you haven't seen my XPS 13 review, I'll leave a link in the description or a card up here. Check that out. I've got a few other videos on the XPS 13 as well. You might want to check those out. Now, anyway, let's get into how this thing games. Well, first of all, I'll just rule out AAA titles. So, for example, with GTA 5 at 720p, I was getting around 33 to 35 frames per second. And that's with a lot of the settings turned down. So it's not a great gamer of a AAA title. And you can actually see here on the Fire Strike score, 894. It's not a very good score. It's not meant for AAA titles. Now, it was around 3 to 5 frames per second faster than the Skylake model playing GTA 5. So you can see it does have an improvement in the graphics there. But still, we'll just steer away from AAA titles. And we'll have a look at other games that can play well. So first up, let's have a look at its Cloudgate score. Now, Cloudgate is a 3D mark benchmark and it's basically tailored to this kind of devices as such as the XPS 13. And just looking at the chart here, what you can see is, first of all, just go on about the temperatures. You can see the temperatures, you're ranging from the low 70s right up to here to the 90s, okay? You can see we're getting into the 90s there, and I've actually had it up to 95 degrees. But if you look down the bottom, you'll see that the frequency is still 3.4 gigahertz at 90 degrees. So it's comfortable gaming at those temperatures. Now, it does get a little bit warm around the middle of the vent area on the bottom of the laptop. It's nothing unbearable, but it does get a bit toasty there. So it has no problem gaming at those sort of temperatures. And it can do it for long periods, like I've gamed on it for hours, and it'll sustain those, those sort of speeds on the CPU there. And it can sustain anywhere from around 2.8 to 3.4, depending on the game and temperature. And why I'm showing you this is because the frames per second I was getting on some of the games, they fluctuate a bit, 15 to 20 frames per second. So I just want to explain why that is, or why I think that is. And there's two reasons, I think. One, more action on the screen. It's normal for the frame rate to go down. But also, what's happening is once it's hitting around 95 degrees, the CPU will slow down. And what you need to know is it doesn't go below its specified speed, which is 2.7 gigahertz. It'll just slow down from its boost clock. So it doesn't thermal throttle. It just goes down from its boost clock and when it gets around 95 degrees, it'll back off and it'll be somewhere between 2.8 and 3.2, something like that. And when it's at the hotter end, it's usually under 3 gigahertz and that's where the frame rates per second go down a little bit too. So a little bit of action plus the heat and the CPU backing off the speed, that's where you're getting those fluctuations in the frame rates. So Dota 2, 1080p, default settings, 45 to 90 frames per second. And that's a huge difference there. But 45 when there's a lot of action and maybe it's a bit hot. And 90 frames per second when not so much is going on and maybe it's a little bit cool. But that's what it does, 45 to 90. On Civilization 5, I was getting around 45 to 60 frames per second. For the same sort of reasons I guess and that's at 1080p so it can game these sort of casual games no problems at 1080p that's playable if you want to drop it down a bit more drop the settings down a bit more you'll get a bit more out of it CSGO 60 to 95 frames per second on CSGO you get around 60 to 95 frames per second there that's pretty much typical for Intel HD graphics I've found so it can play CSGO no problems and that's at 1080p as well with default settings. And as you can see there, the Cloudgate score is 6,207. Some other games I tested were WoW Legions 1080p, 35 to 45 frames per second and Overwatch 1080p, 40 to 60 frames per second. So you can see those type of games, it can play no problems. You try to play AAA title, you're not going to be doing it. It's no good for that. But these casual games that I've mentioned, no problems there. 1080p playing those games. And overall, compared to the Skylake model, 
Yes, there is a bit of an increase there, but it's not a great leap. You're looking at 5 to 12% increase in the graphics performance there over the Skylink model. So I think the Dell XPS 13 is actually great for gaming if you want to stick to those casual games. And also I'll throw in there Football Manager, which I play all the time. It plays that like a boss. It was like... This is made for Football Manager, this laptop, and it's really great for that. So that's it. That's my gaming review of the Dell XPS 13. I'd really like to thank you guys for watching. Give me a thumbs up there. that will be great. And if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe. Let me know down there in the comments what you think. Do you reckon the performance is good? Or is there anything else you'd like to see with the XPS 13? And until next time, guys, as always, tally ho.